So a number of years ago, I stumbled upon the following document during my research into gravity control and alternative energy. The document entitled Decker's Antigravity Correlatives lists a number of accounts of levitation and antigravity allegedly achieved at different times in the modern industrial age. The list was compiled in 1993 by a man named Jerry Decker, who unfortunately passed away in 2017. Decker was the creator of KeleyNet, an online community featuring accounts, correspondences, research papers that dealt with gravity control, free energy, psychotronics, and other areas which would be considered fringe by the mainstream scientific community. The short accounts listed in the document are tied by Decker in a reimagining of the nature of gravity, which is needed to understand how these alleged methods work. Decker says that the following is a compilation of information pointing to the basic principles of levitation that he has found in years of collecting and analyzing levitation phenomena and which can be reduced to a basic set of clues. He says that these correlations are more than sufficient to give us engineering approaches to the mitigation or complete negation of what we term weight and gravity. One should understand the complete fallacy regarding the Newtonian concept of gravity being an attractive force. Rather, the majority of evidence points to gravity being a pushing force most clearly seen in relationships of celestial bodies. The permutations associated with smaller aggregates make it more difficult to perceive the true nature of gravity. He says that the simplest approach to keep in mind is that the universe is full of pressure zones that flow to towards what is called the neutral center of all masses at a velocity proportionate to the mass aggregate size. Such a flow can be thought of as a wind blowing into the planet, with the planet functioning as a screen onto which all masses are held in this incoming pressure. We and all other mass aggregates which are associated with a particular celestial body are thus held into the planet by this etheric wind. Overcoming it is then simply a matter of coming to speed with this incoming flow. I will elaborate on this and some additional alternative views of gravity in a future video. But first, let's take a look at some of these very interesting accounts. The first account deals with what are called levity rings. It is a technique developed by John Worrell Keeley, a Philadelphian inventor who experimented with sound waves in the 1800s. I mentioned him a number of times in past videos. So we're going to skip these first two points which deal with uh, thrust and a uh, weight increase and focus exclusively on levitation. So under levitation it says that a wire or ring is placed around an object. The ring is then fed with a frequency that resonates with the neutral center of the mass. And so we discussed previously that each mass has its own resonant frequency or rather frequencies. Uh, John Keeley called this the, the mass chord, which uh, I assume would be one of the base resonant frequencies as well, well as uh, three or more or two or more of it uh, its harmonics uh, sounded simultaneously. Now it says that such a resonance properly directed can cause what are called high vortex action to decrease or increase the etheric flow through the mass neutral center. This flow creates the equivalent of a soliton or a self-containing standing wave with extremely high rotational velocities on the perimeter of the mass. Such a flow directly, directly controls the weight of the mass by exceeding what is called the flock z-axis or better stated by creating a higher potential in the mass aggregate than that of the surrounding media for ejection of the mass to one more favorable to its energy level. And so we know that in nature that objects tend to seek 
a lower energy level. Keeley also reports a cooling effect of the local air when the anti-gravity effect is in operation. So the next account is taken from an 1890s series airship contact case. It says that an old man claimed that he had inherited the secret of anti-gravity from his late uncle. He exclaims, weight is no object to me. I suspend all gravity by placing a small wire around an object. It says that this particular airship floated in the air as a ship floats on water. The next account describes what is called the dodo ring. This was a therapeutic device that was developed by a scientist named Dr. Gianni Dodo, who applied this understanding of DNA to his ring device, which acted as an inductive coil to recharge the cells to their correct energy level and to promote longevity. So as I understand, this device functions similarly to uh, a thermocouple in which you would heat the juncture point of two dissimilar metals and cause the current flow. So the dodo ring uh, allegedly created a very low voltage, uh, high ampere current of about 30,000 amps. This of course produced a very high energy DC magnetic field which would cause an energy transfer which would pull up the energy in a sick body due to their enriched background. It also says that there are reports that the ring technology was supp suppressed because the ring itself would levitate from the floor due to its interaction with the Earth's magnetic field as it had a very strong magnetic field due to the flow of the 30,000 ampere current. Other reports claim that all funding was removed and the machines destroyed because they actually cure cancer. So the next account uh, describes uh, the device created by Nikola Tesla. It's, it quotes Tesla as saying, I can place a ring around the earth at the equator and move it anywhere I so wish. It is also claimed that Tesla built a levitating sphere comprised of a ball with a single ring at the equator. When this ring was fed with an alternating current at high potential, one half of the sphere became hot, the other very cold, and the sphere levitate, levitated to a height depending on the energy applied. Let's see, I'm going to skip the next account and go to number six. So this one uh, describes a device built by a man named Farrell. It describes an 18 ounce box that was fitted with a ring of electrical interrupters, which when powered will produce a negative weight of three ounces to cause the box to float in the air. These electrical interrupters when fire at a frequency related to or equal to that of the mass aggregate frequency will produce the rotating sphere of high potential that results in levitation or weight loss. I will save the remainder of these accounts for the next video, Alternative Views of Gravity. But what we might notice about the accounts just presented is that they all seem to involve the wrapping of a wire or a ring around the central periphery of a heavy object which is then excited by some form of energy, whether electromagnetic, acoustic vibration, or electrostatic. I would imagine that if these accounts were true, that such a technique might look similar to this. Here, a solenoid is wrapped around a small object and then energized with household AC. Being placed over a thick aluminum plate the coil levitates due to Lenz's law, lifting the object in the center with it into the air. Now, of course, in the accounts, only one turn of wire or a ring is used rather than 
several hundred turns of wire as in the solenoid. But the ultimate question is, could a wire or coil be sufficiently energized with enough energy and or frequency to actually polarize the object around which it is wrapped? We've heard of experiments in which a super strong magnetic field can actually induce temporary polarized magnetism in normally non-magnetic objects, including living creatures, enabling them to be stably levitated just as a superconductor stably levitates over a strong magnet. What if we could induce this same level of magnet, magnetic field in a coil around a stone? What would then happen if we modulated this magnetic field as to match the frequency in hertz of the Earth's natural polar forces, such as the tremendous Birkeland currents? Would the system couple to and interact with these natural fields and be able to neutralize a fraction or all of the stone's weight? What is the origin of this idea of being able to encapsulate a heavy object within an energy field? and being able to either temporarily shield that object from the effects of gravity or to temporarily alter its molecular properties, polarizing it such that it could react with external electromagnetic or gravitic fields, or both. In the next two videos, we'll discuss the concept further along with a few other radical alternative theories of gravity.